Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to be making over this dresser. It's got a ton of stickers on the sides and the drawers do not open very great. And it's got this weird little hole there. There is some scratches on the side, but overall it's in pretty good shape. So we're going to start with removing the hardware. I definitely will be keeping this hardware and reusing it for this piece. I think it fits really well into it. I had a really difficult time removing this last drawer. It was stuck in there really good. I found out that the drawers were broken. Three out of four of them I had to fix with some wood glue. Before I brought the drawers inside, I'm just vacuuming out all the dirt. You want to make sure that you're getting inside of the dresser as well. Vacuuming a piece before cleaning it is good practice because you're going to end up spending a lot more time if you're cleaning something that's covered in dirt versus taking the vacuum and getting as much of it out as you can. I'm going to be using Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner. This is my first time using it, but it's eco-friendly and it smells really good. It almost has a minty smell to it, so I really enjoyed using it while I was cleaning this piece. Although Simple Green is great for cleaning and degreasing, these stickers really needed something a little bit stronger. So I'm just using some crud cutter and it is still really difficult to take off. So I just took a cloth and sprayed it down and let it soak in there for a few minutes while I went on and cleaned the drawers. I ended up switching to a razor blade just to try and get the stickers off. It's a bit difficult with big hands and a small little razor, but I made it work. I'm not too concerned about scratching this piece that much on the outside because I am going to be painting it. Once I was finished cleaning the entire piece, I wiped it down with some clean water to remove any residue that could have been left behind. So the reason I brought the drawers inside to do the gluing is because the glue needs warmer weather to be able to set up properly and my garage is not heated, it's quite cold out there. And uh, again, I had to fix three drawers, almost all of them were messed up and I had to take them apart and refix them. I put glue on both the sides that I'm attaching it to to make sure it gets a good bond and hopefully lasts many years to come. I only have two large clamps like this and you really don't realize how many clamps you really need until you have a project where all the drawers are broken. It took me quite a while to fix all three drawers with only having two clamps, but I was able to make it work and they look so much better now. Because of this awkward angle as well, I did have to come in and nail the side so that way the board wasn't popping up on me. Some of the other drawers just had a bit of a crack and I didn't want to completely break it. So I'm just using some dental floss to be able to get that glue in there. I did have to add a little bit more because when you clamp it up, you really wanna have that squeeze out to make sure that the joint is fully loaded. The top drawer was the only one that I didn't have to fix other than some wood filler. Now this wood filler is quite old. It's not usually this thick. I probably wouldn't buy this wood filler again. I think there's better products out there, but I don't want to waste it, so I'm just using it. I will be adding some furniture legs to this dresser, so I just have to remove the base. I couldn't seem to get this one bottom chunk off. I don't know what was going on with it, but I was able to pry it off and it turns out it was a screw holding it, but I don't know why um, it was blocked like that. It was really strange. I was hoping I could just install the furniture legs on the bottom, but I had to cut a piece of plywood because it was uneven, so it really needed something flat, so that way the dresser is not all messed up when it stands up straight. 
So I just measured the bottom base and then drew lines with a pencil and now I'm just using the Black & Decker jigsaw to cut it. To avoid the wood from splitting and just make it easier to put screws in, I'm just doing some pilot holes. And then I'm just screwing it into the bottom so that way it's nice and secure. I set the furniture legs on top just to visualize where I wanted them. And look at how cold it is outside, that's my breath. I am freezing. Once I figured out where I wanted the furniture legs, I just used a pencil and marked where I was going to put the screws and twisted the furniture legs on. This is why it's so cold in my garage. You want to say hi? Once I warmed up a bit inside, I went back out to the garage to start sanding the drawer fronts. You can tell that someone else had previously refinished this because there is some swirl marks from a sander that I will have to get out. You want to make sure that you are sanding with the wood grain. If you don't do that, you can get splotchiness with your stain, so always sand with the wood grain. Unfortunately, one of the drawers had a big stain. I couldn't get it out with the sander. I tried bleach and hydrogen peroxide, but unfortunately none of it worked, so I just ended up leaving it. Because the drawers were broken, that's why it didn't slide in and out very well, so I'm just sanding down the edges and anywhere the drawer touches. I ended up sanding an entire drawer before I realized I should grab my carbine scraper. I really need to just grab it first. I love scraping. It just saves so much time with the sander and you save on sanding pads. Now that the wood filler is dry on the top drawer, I'm just sanding it down with the 220 grit sandpaper. I did have to fill this about two to three times to make it flush. Once I was done stripping everything down that I was planning on staining, I'm just using a 220 grit sandpaper to sand the entire surface of the dresser. This helps your paint adhere. It gives your paint something to stick to, so it's always important to scuff sand. Now that everything is scuff sanded, I'm just filling some spots where there was missing veneer and some scratches as well. This is my first time using this wood filler. I really do like it, it's easy to work with, but I think it is better for just small scratches since I had to fill the big hole about two to three times to get it flush. After everything was dry, I sanded it down with a 220 grit sandpaper, and now I'm just using a damp cloth to wipe away any of the dust before I start priming. And I am using Zinsser's Bin Shellac Base Primer. I find it easiest to use a microfiber roller to apply this primer. I get about two to three uses out of it before I throw it out and I keep it in the fridge between projects. I typically will only do one coat of primer unless I see bleed through. And although you can't see it, I am wearing a respirator while using this primer. Although this piece is solid wood, it does have veneer, so just to make sure I don't have to resand it and possibly risk breaking uh, through the veneer, I'm just using some pre-stained conditioner. This helps the stain take evenly over the entire piece and hopefully will avoid getting splotchiness. A lot of people don't realize that oil rags can spontaneously combust, so it's good practice to put them in a metal container with some water until you can properly dispose of them. Now I'm just using a fine grit sanding sponge to knock down any texture before I paint using House and Canvas in Shadow. I decided to remove the tape on this part because if I get any chalk paint on it, it is easier to sand off than the primer. When you're working with a roller, you want to make sure that you're loading the paint on really well, but then you also want to unload it before starting your project. You want to do light coats, and multiple light coats is always best to avoid any roller marks. At first I was trying to be really careful not to get any paint on the part that I wanted to stain, but then I realized that there was some swirl marks from the sander, so ultimately I decided to completely finish the project because chalk paint is not very wipeable. I ended up painting and top coating, waiting for that to dry before I brought it back out to the garage to sand away the swirling marks. 
depending how my finish looks, sometimes I will just use the sanding sponge for any little bump that I can feel. And then I am just taking a damp rag and wiping off all of the dust that that created. I ended up doing a total of three coats to get full coverage with this color. And in between coats, I just put all my stuff in a bag and tie it up tight. While my paint was drying, I'm just cleaning up the hardware with some Barkeeper's Friend. Unfortunately, they weren't in as great a shape as I hoped, so I do have to spray paint them. Now that all my painting's done and dried, I am using Varathane Diamond Wood Finish in Satin to top coat it. And I just used a brush that already had some of the paint on it. This helps to avoid any streaking that's common with this type of top coat and then I just use the sponge to stir it up a little bit more. Just like with the paint, it's always good to do multiple light coats and you wanna make sure that you're going in the same direction. This helps to avoid any streaking as well. I typically do two coats on the entire piece and three coats on the top. I let the top coat dry overnight before bringing it back out to the garage to sand off those swirl marks. And I did use the wood conditioner as well before applying this stain. Apparently I forgot to hit record for the first coat of spray paint, so this is the second one. It took about three coats and then a top coat. Now I did bust through the veneer just a little bit and I'm taking a permanent marker and just trying to blend in the edge that I ended up going through. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Now I'm just applying the clear top coat going with the wood grain. I really want to make sure these drawers are going to go in and out smoothly, so I just took some wax and I'm putting it anywhere where the drawers are sliding on. Look at how smooth it is now, I couldn't even get it out before. Because I sanded the inside of the drawers, I just want to freshen it up with some Howard Feed and Wax. This will really bring the life back into the wood and also leave a nice orange scent. And then the final step is just putting the hardware back on. So let's just have another quick look at the before. And now here's the after. <laughs> 